Good morning, everybody. I'm excited. It's a fall, crisp, cool day. And I'll just tell you, southern chicks like to glisten, not sweat. So today we are just, I love it. It's crisp and the air feels so good. And we're welcoming Bill Cagle, who is a local native of Pickens County. And I bet most of y'all out there know him. And if not, you know his precious daddy, Daddy Bob, as everybody referred to Mr. Bob Cagle, who um, went to be with the Lord a couple of years ago, didn't he? Uh, 2016, August of 2016. Wow, wow. You know, a couple of the first people I ever met when I moved to town happened to be both the undertakers, the Chapman <laughs> and the Cagle, because if you own a restaurant, everybody comes in to eat. And mm -hmm. Mama had the little sandwich shop then. Mm -hmm. And everybody came in to eat. And uh, I can remember, I was thinking the other day about all the faces and most of them had worked at Georgia Marble at some point in time. And I remember Mama telling me the history because she started in Tate at the mm -hmm. Georgia Marble Company House, the company house. cooking for executives. And it was whoever was in town that week, whoever the bosses were bringing to lunch. Mm -hmm. And she had Miss Essie working in the kitchen with her. <clears throat> now, I don't know about you, but I've been to one of the meals at Mount Calvary Church. <laughs> And I'm telling you, the best cooks in the world were located in this little two-mile radius in Tate, Georgia. Mm -hmm. The best cooks ever. Mm -hmm. And sweet, welcoming, warm people. And many of them um, got a dinner bucket and headed to the mines every day, didn't yep. they? Sure did. Sure did, yeah. That was, um, you know, you talking about your fam or family lineages working at Georgia Marble. That's... Uh, one reason why I wrote the book, one of several reasons. Mm -hmm. um, my wife, Bay, her <clears throat> great-grandfather hired my grandfather, Homer Walker, back in the early 20s. And I remember Mr. Walker. Yeah, and isn't he, that crazy? He, he was a water boy. Hired him. His dad passed away when he was young. The family moved from uh, Lumpkin County to Marble Hill. Mm -hmm. And the boys, including my grandfather, went to work in George Marble to help support the family. And a water boy would be somebody who literally took water to? He carried the buckets of water down into the, the quarries for the men. He wow. would like to say he was 12 or 13, and he was hired by Bay's great-grandfather, Sid Fields. Oh, my gosh. And Is that not an awesome history? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. and during the interim, he actually <clears throat> lived with Sid and Ella Fields for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the stories was, you know, I remember him telling me, it wasn't long, two, two, well, he told me this back years ago when Bay and I first started dating about um, they were at Marble Hill Church during revival and the preacher made an altar call. And uh, um, I think the preacher said something like, all those that have been saved, um, sit down. And my grandfather was the only one standing up. And Ella, my wife's great-grandfather, looked at <coughs> Sidney, her husband, and said, uh, oh, Sid, look at Homer, or what about Homer? And she went back to him, and he fell. And then he, a few minutes later, he was saved. He said, I saw the prettiest green pasture. So wow. a little bit of a legacy wow. there that's awfully to be wow. proud of. So. Wow. Well, we're going to talk, we're going to spend a lot of time today talking about George Marble, but we want to share something right now. If you're out and about this weekend, all the fall festivals are everywhere, but we're going to tell you, stay off of 515 and get on the back roads. And mm -hmm. as you're coming the back road through Tate, Georgia, and you pass the Georgia Marble beautiful pink mm -hmm. mansion, and you look to your left, that's what's referred to as Sandy Bottoms. Correct. And it is absolutely one of the most picturesque places in North Georgia. Mm -hmm. And not many people understand that it's just this, it has cattle on it now, doesn't it? Yeah, it's ha cattle on it now. Now, Dr. Darnell used to Had own it, it forever. before he, yep. before he yep. passed away a number of years ago. And now, do you have so. the history of that barn in your book? I don't mention the barn. Uh, that was Miss Flory's barn. She, I love she, that barn. she had the, um, uh, she, how she earned her spending money, pocket money, mm -hmm. which was Colonel Sam's uh, sister. She was the last resident of the Tate House. Mm -hmm. um, she leased the mules to the company, and that's how she got her had her spending money back in the day. Wow. And that barn is still standing. Still I standing. wonder what the age of it is. It has to go back to the early 1900s. I know, mm -hmm. you know, of course, I, I know it's been probably added onto and, and renovated over the years, but it, it, it's at least 100, it has to be 100 years yeah. old. Because oh, yeah. Colonel Sam, he bought Georgia Marble in 1905. And then when um, 
he moved into the Tate house around 1927. Um, that you know, he, Luke, and Flory moved into the the Tate house, and that's like I say, that's how she earned her. Mm -hmm. The mad barn money. was probably already yeah, there. Probably yeah, already there. Yeah, yeah. Because you know that where the old 53 is right there, where uh, the Tate house is, that was the Federal Road, and that's mm -hmm. one reason why I wrote the book. You know, the the road to Georgia Marbles, mm -hmm. how the uh, the the Georgia Marble or the Federal Road led to the discovery of. The commercial uh, discovery of the marble industry and how the uh, George Marble Company was formed and through the Colonel Sam Tate era. Up and we're going to talk about all of that, including some of the amazing cemeteries that you can oh, go and visit mm. in Pickens County and see the most beautiful, absolutely, the works of the first artisans mm -hmm. who came from Italy. Italy, yep. Oh my gosh, it is amazing. So we're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but right now I have a couple of things we need to uh, share with you. First of all, my bestie, Miss Vicki, um, has been not here for a while because her mother-in-law had been staying with her mom for 10 years. Her mom was her caretaker. And Miss Betty did a fantastic job of caring for sweet Mrs. Holyfield. Well, Mrs. Holyfield had to come and live with Vicki for a little bit because Vicki's mom came down with COVID. And so Vicki's mom is recovering from COVID and we're very happy to say she is, but this is a photo of Mrs. Holyfield just about 10 days ago. And um, she was very happy to be at Vicki's and everything was great. And she was battling Alzheimer's and um, the end of her life came on Sunday morning at five o'clock. So this precious lady has gone on to be with Jesus and, and we have learned quickly that even though she was almost 102, we are not guaranteed tomorrow. And we have all seen that. We all have friends who have, who have lost a battle to COVID, but this precious lady um, had Alzheimer's and she was well cared for, much loved, and she has gone to be with Jesus now. So please say a prayer for Vicki. And, huh? Oh yeah, the kitty cat, yeah, yeah. But please say a prayer for Vicki because this is her husband's mom. And this is really, really tough because Dawn was an only child. So now it kind of left Vicki with not a lot of family left. And so it's been, it's been a sad few days. But I was with her yesterday and we went down to the um, funeral home. And I might say we took the prettiest pink outfit you ever saw for her to go meet Jesus in. And um, it's all going to be good. You know, she lived a, a long time happy life and was loved until the end of her life and um, I hope everybody you know gets to know that love and peace and comfort that she felt so so say a prayer for her also please continue to pray for Brad Cox he was the lead singer of Glory Bound for many years and Brad is battling COVID and he's probably Bill he's probably your age Wow. and he's one of those that you think he's healthy he's robust he's busy he's writing songs he's singing for Jesus every day in church and then he has been in serious serious very serious condition so please pray for him also there's a very special lady here um, we are trying to find some music where she appeared on ETC and I don't know if we're gonna find it or not but it's um, Debbie and Sanford Fountain her mom passed away on Friday and um, she had battled dementia for many years. And, you know, we all are seeing the end of lives as they age, but we're also seeing the end of lives with a lot of younger people because of COVID. And so please continue to pray for each other. Please social distance and please try to stay healthy. Take care of yourself. I'm so vitamined up. If you did, they're gonna do some labs on me in about 10 days. Again, but if you dissected me right now, I've got every vitamin known to man in me because I am trying my best. We're coming into winter months and we gotta stay healthy mm -hmm. and we gotta take care of ourselves. And um, you know, we do the best we can do and that's all you can do. Have that's any right. of y'all had COVID? No, fortunately, no, no one Not in our family's would. had it. Um, yeah. But we're like you, Sherry. We're Living off vitamin C, D, mm -hmm. and zinc, zinc and magnesium, yep, you name yep. it. <laughs> yeah. We're loading yeah. up with it. So. Yeah, yeah, and we're doing that. And I started doing the elderberry this yep. week, too. I'll do that too. Yeah, yeah, we're doing that, too. And I said, it's kind of funny because if you dissected me, they'd probably go, she doesn't <laughs> eat. All these little things are in there. In her. But I'm just pumping it up and trying to stay healthy. And I hope that y'all will, too. I hope that you will stay safe and healthy and, and take care of yourselves. And we're going to go ahead and take a commercial break. So when we come back, we can talk Georgia Marble 
full-fledged because um, I know that I would not be in the community, in the mountains, if my mama had not gone to work for the George Marble Company as she prepared meals for the executives. And mama loved that, she loved doing it. She loved having Essie in the kitchen because I will just tell you, Miss Essie Roach was probably the finest cook that ever hit these <laughs> mountains. And uh, she's gone on to be with Jesus, but Sweet Truman, isn't he out at uh, Pruitt Healthcare? He's at Pruitt, mm -hmm. he's at 92 or three. He's, yeah, yeah. You know, an amazing, amazing legacy, amazing family. And uh, so we're gonna go to a commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the legacy of Georgia Marble. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Most of us are in touch with the internet in one way or another all day long. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, in touch. ETC cares about your connection. We know strong, reliable internet with your choice of speeds makes life better. If you need an upgrade or just have a question, get in touch. Call or visit etcnow.com today. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Okay, guys, can you pull up the house, the company house that where Mama lived, and, and we're going to talk about this, because there's one picture of me and my daughter Angela sitting on that porch, and my lifelong dream all of my life has been to rebuild that house and make it a home for women who are recovering from an addiction. I've always wanted to rebuild that house. Do you remember? Have you ever been in that house? No, it was... Oh my gosh, I absolutely loved it. When you walked in the front door, to the left was a big, beautiful, formal dining room, mm -hmm. and it was absolutely gorgeous. And upstairs, it had all the rooms where the teachers lived. Mm -hmm. And the Tates brought the teachers to town mm -hmm. to educate the community and made this house available for teachers to live in. So all my life, that was my that's my vision. And if I ever get rich, ever get rich. I'm building that house. I, I just absolutely loved it and it had the warmest, sweetest feeling. But in the kitchen, Bill, it had this huge marble table. Wow. And that's where Essie made biscuits or pie crust or whatever. Right. And I can tell you that cold marble makes the best pie crust yep. in the world. And it just, it was a fantastic, fantastic home and sadly it burned. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, it was so, so sad and it was right next door to the school. Mm -hmm. And um, how in the world, I don't know how the fire started, but it, it burned and uh, nobody ever, re you know, thought about rebuilding it. But I just have always had this vision to rebuild that house. And, that would uh, be a... To do it just like it was inside because it was, it was amazing. And actually, the picture of Ronnie and I that was sitting on that front porch, that's where we were getting married July 31st. 
but we had a change of plans and we didn't get married till October 19th today. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, and Mama said, the cake's made and you're changing the date. I said, yes, ma'am, can you freeze that cake? <laughs> That's fun. So, but anyway, on October the 19th, yeah, we got married and the take, that, that house is a big part of why I'm here. So I love that house then. The memories in that home, the, the wonderful people who came here to visit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of Georgia Marble. And it was, it was many people from, from nations everywhere oh, came yeah, to sure. Tate, Georgia because of that, the marble industry. So thanks for sharing that photo. Okay, now tell me when you started this, Number one, what, what was your goal to share about this? Well, how it started was uh, about 15 years ago, I started doing the tours for the Georgia Marble Festival mm -hmm. and the Cory Tours. And um, they had a prepared script that it, it wasn't the best. I mean, mm -hmm. it was, it didn't flow real well and some of it wasn't real accurate. And so I just did my own thing, being mm -hmm. a history buff and mm -hmm. what have you. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and the older I get, more appreciation of history I, I have. But um, so I just did my own story about the Federal Road because mm -hmm. that was instrumental in developing all of North Georgia. Did the Federal Road go through Smoky Holler? Yes. Okay. Well, it went essentially where the Tate House is. So okay. I mean, we went, went by the uh, uh, the original Federal Road. There's in front of the Tate House. There's still some. Old, you can still see part of the old road bed. Mm -hmm. But it went from. Uh, essentially through Tate, by the Tate House, the Tate, the Tate School, and went up just parallel to 05, going into Jasper now. And so I, I wrote, uh, I, I did my own script, and, and on, on the Federal Road, the Cherokees in this area, mm -hmm. um, and then how the marble industry was discovered, commercially discovered. Through. And again, tell that story because we did that while we were on Facebook a few minutes ago. How did that, how did that happen? Okay, Henry Fitzsimmons, he was an Irishman mm -hmm. and he, he immigrated or migrated to uh, the United States from Ireland in 1819. Mm -hmm. And fast forward till 1838, I believe it was, it's in my book. Which was after the removal of the Cherokee. Yes, he drew the land lottery, he, drew, he won the land lottery. And so he was in, living in Lawrenceville. He was a stonemason. And he was traveling to, some legends have it, he was going to Tennessee to work, build a dike. Mm -hmm. But I heard, found out from a family descendant of his while I was writing the book that he won the land, lot, uh, land lottery, mm -hmm. essentially where Marble Hill Church and Calcium Products is now mm -hmm. in, in Marble mm -hmm. Hill, mm -hmm. in that vicinity. And he was kicked off a stagecoach being the good Irishman that he was. Mm -hmm. Might have had a drink Had a drink or two, stopped one of the ends, yes. you know. Might have been Fourth of July yeah, Could have been, could have been. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. He uh, maybe consumed a little bit too much white lightning at one of the ends mm -hmm. along the Federal Road and they kicked him off the stagecoach. Well, being a stonemason, <clears throat> excuse me, he uh, literally and figuratively stumbled across this outcropping of marble and realized, hey, this is great quality marble. Wow. The following year, he moved his family from Lawrenceville or Gwinnett County to Marble Hill, and the rest is history. And it is history. Yeah, it is history. And, and you know, when we think about, there's not a building in America that has marble on it that hasn't come to Georgia Marble and gotten the marble. Mm -hmm. So from the um, Lincoln Memorial to the streets of Manhattan, there's marble everywhere. Chicago, yep. it's everywhere. It's in every state in the Union. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Washington, D.C., about over 60% of the buildings and monuments contain Georgia marble. You know, Arlington National Cemetery is about 95% oh, yeah. Georgia marble, all the headstones. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, a, a lot of in-depth, great history there. And that's what, like I said, that's one reason why I wrote the book. And then when I, when I would finish up my tours, people would ask, well, where can we buy a book on this? And, well, there's not really a book. Mm -hmm. There's some books you might find out of publication if you're lucky. Well, people on my tour would say, well, you need to write a book, you need to write a book. Well, I'm pretty hard-headed after about eight or 10 years. <laughs> yeah, after about, okay. after about 10 or 12 years of hearing you need to write a book, it finally penetrated. And yeah. so I started collecting my uh, sources and information and outline about four years ago. And then when I became president of the Historical Association, that really opened up some doors for me and found mm -hmm. a lot of information that helped that legitimized and validated a lot of the stories that I that I had always heard my whole life mm -hmm. about the company. 
And so all the pieces came together and then um, here we go, here we yeah. are. So You know, I, one of my favorite places to visit is where the Tates are buried at mm -hmm. the cemetery. Tomb, State Tomb. It's beautiful. Yes, it is. Absolutely beautiful. But it's not maintained as nicely as I think it should be. Mm -hmm. Who's in charge of that? Well, the you know, you would think the Tate Estate, I think they do help out some, um, but the Amicola Garden Club is the one that mm -hmm. really maintains it now. And of course, like a lot of other um, civic groups, they, they're dying off, dying off and they're it. becoming yeah. older yeah. and they're not able to do it. Yeah. You know, back in the, was it the early mid 80s, it became, you couldn't even hardly see the cemetery because it was right. grown up. Right. But the Amicola Garden Club restored it and, it and yep. kept it up, has kept yep. it up all these years. Yeah, well this time of year when the leaves fall, right. it's hard to see right. everything. But, um, you know, I have so many happy memories of that area and of Smoky Holler. And now I was telling you before we came on the air, mm -hmm. I cut through Smoky Holler about once a week. Mm -hmm. And I always, if I'm showing people property in the area, I go to Tate and I say, this is the most amazing village in the world mm -hmm. because to me it is like the quietest, greatest place to live. Mm -hmm. The sad thing about living there is you can't find a house because there's never one available. <laughs> That's right. And if it is, there's like 16 bids on it in yep. five minutes. So forget it, you're not moving to Tate. But um, it is such a quaint, beautiful community, but then outlying is all that land at Smoky Holler. Mm -hmm which to me, we need to build homes, we need to do something, but it still belongs to the Tate Estate? Yes, it does. It's wow. still owned by wow. the Tate Estate. They still own thousands of acres of land in Pickens County. Um, and who's left to say what will happen to all of this property? Uh, it, well, it, it would be the estate if they ever decide. I mean, they could legally, I guess they could to, uh, uh, decide to sell to a developer or investor or I wonder whatever. if there's anything in the will that says this must always remain. That I don't know. I do know that. Because you would think something would have been developed by now. You would think so. But again, they, you know, they don't have to, they don't have to sell it. I mean, because right. they're still getting royalties for every pound or ton of marble mm -hmm. or a cubic foot of marble that's quarried at Tate and also at, at uh, Calcium Products Division. Mm -hmm. So they, they have a royalty, so they're getting paid Forever. as long as they're taking yeah. mar marble yeah. out of the ground. Is there ever going to be a time that there is no Georgia marble left? Not in our lifetime, Sherry, or our kids or grandkids or great grandkids. There's over, they estimate over 2,000 years left of marble. Really? Yeah. Wow. At, wow. at today's you know, demand, mm -hmm. there'd be over 2,000 years. Well, as you travel through Smoky Holler and we look to the beautiful, beautiful church sitting mm -hmm. on the hill, how could that be restored? What the, could the be? old Methodist Church? Yes, yes. Um, well, that's I, such an amazing building, but it's really getting in very oh, bad repair. I don't even know yeah. if it's. You, I don't even know if it would make financial sense to repair it now. So it's so deteriorated because it's been vacant for at least twenty something years yeah, now. Yeah. But I mean, it, it, I mean, if the Tate Estate um, allowed permission for somebody to come in and restore it. I mean, it could be done, I'm sure, or rebuilt, mm -hmm. um, because that church, Mount Calvary. The kudzu grows all oh, yeah, around it. I yeah. mean, you can't even get to it right now. That church, Mount Calvary, and Tate, if I'm not mistaken, Tate Methodist Church, if they ever disband as a church, then the property reverts back to the estate. Mm -hmm. I think that was in the will or in the deed when the property was deeded over or allowed the churches to be constituted and, and to be built. And Mount Calvary is such a sweet, sweet spirit. Mm -hmm. Such a, that's that's so cool. And it's right at the intersection where you go to Head Start. Right. And then you go out and come out in Nelson. Nelson. So, and it's just, it's it's off the beaten path. And mm -hmm. so one of the things I wanted to share with everybody today, stay off 515, get out on the back roads, yep. go through these little tiny haulers yep. and really or Nelson. Go get through Nelson. to know, get mm -hmm. to know these communities that were built on the sweat and the blood and the tears of Georgia marble mm -hmm. workers who walked into those mines every single day. Now, Bill, were there ever incidents where lives were lost at Georgia marble? Oh yeah, you know, they're, they're, you know, especially back, you know, years ago, 100 years ago before <clears throat> insurance and, and OSHA and safety mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, there's, you know, there's a monument at the Tate Clinic out in front of the, the clinic there, that little headstone monument. That's all the men that perished mm -hmm. while working at Georgia Marble Company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's there's been a fair number. I don't know right offhand, but there's, you know, several dozen. And and when we think about I love to visit the old cemeteries. 
And my favorite thing to go to are the artisans who carved the monuments of other people to find their headstones. Mm -hmm. Because obviously they had the prettiest ones. <laughs> they probably did their own ahead of time. But the, oh my gosh, the talent. Oh yeah. It's unbelievable. I don't know if you could, I don't know if you could uh, duplicate that work today or not. No, no. And, <laughs> and that's what, then the tools they had in the 1800s were not like the air tools right. they have today. Right. So they can create. Do you know Tim Hyde? You I know, know the name, but I don't well, know he, Tim. He's one of the carvers, and he does fantastic, fantastic work. And I'm sure the tools that Tim uses are not the same tools that are, were used in 1800s. Right. So those artisans from Italy came here, and uh, their work, and, and I'm thinking there's a church in Nelson that has plenty of it. There's one in Balgrin that has plenty of those beautiful monuments. And then, of course, the, the cemetery right at the Tate, what's that, at the railroad, right That's there. the Tate Family yeah. Cemetery. Plenty of them in there. But if you get all, I think Four Mile Church even has a couple of them. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure Bethesda. Yeah. Got, yeah, yeah. They've got some nice monuments there. They've got in some there. beautiful yeah. ones there. And, and sadly, they're getting, they need to be pressure washed yep. or cleaned, you know. Somebody ought to do that because this is, this is really cool stuff. And I don't know if you visited any of those cemeteries when uh, you were doing your book. Not not during while well, I was writing the book, but I have been through a lot of those mm -hmm. cemeteries. I've got family buried at Four Mile, and uh, uh, you know Long Swamp's got some nice monuments, and then mm -hmm. Corinth's got some nice ones too. Because the, all those workers, because Corinth and Long Swamp Church were just right on the outskirts of uh, the Southern Marble Company and, and Georgia Marble Company and Marble Hill back during the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bethesda, obviously, with it being right there in, on the outskirts of town of Nelson from the Blue Ridge Marble Plant, has got some really nice monuments, too. Have you ever <clears> stood <throat> at Georgia Marble when they're blasting? At Calcium Products? Right. I feel it at our house when Do they you? blast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we have some property listed in the Nelson area. Mm -hmm. And people kept saying, but it's near the quarry. It's near the quarry. And I thought, well, I can just hush y'all up in just a minute. So I went out there one day with my phone and the plant manager, and, I, and he was awesome, and he was on the radio, and he was helping us, and they were telling us when they were gonna blast, and they blasted, and I said, is that it? It didn't even move the ground. And it did nothing, <coughs> and, and I'm like, it's over? And they said, yeah, because people kept saying, we love this land, we love this land, but it's near the quarry. Okay, they blast twice a week, mm -hmm. and it went, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, really? <laughs> Are they talking about the rock, the aggregate quarry? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, in Nelson. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, and it was so funny because my broker was having a nervous breakdown because here I am posting this on Facebook <laughs> that, yes, we have this land for sale, and yes, it's beautiful, and yes, it's on the creek, and that's what made me think of it. It's on Long Swamp Creek. Oh, yeah. It's just absolutely gorgeous property, but everybody's been a little bit nervous about it because it's near where they blast. Well, they blasted, and I went, really? <laughs> you know, it was nothing. <laughs> so... So now when you feel it at your house, do you also hear anything or you just feel a little? You just feel a, a tremor. Mm -hmm. um, and how often do you feel that? Well, if I'm at home, a lot of times you'll feel it. So, I mean, they blast every day. Because mm -hmm. at, um, at, at Nelson, they'll blast twice a right. week. Right. But at Calcium Products and, and Huber up the street, they're mm -hmm. blasting almost daily. Really? Sometimes, some days you don't, I, I guess depending on where they're blasting. Mm -hmm. um, you don't feel it, but well, I know when we were building our house several years ago, the landscaper, I got off work early to come see what was going on when we were building it, and they were frantic. They had this look of like, there you know, an oh yeah, they thought, you know, the San Andreas Fault was there and it was oh, about to fall. Funny. And I said, what's going on? I said, man, we just felt an earthquake tremor. I said, no, that's, jo that's just Georgia, Georgia Marble, Marble blasting. Yeah, so. yeah. Now, <clears throat> if they started in the early 1800s and they're going strong today, and they have enough marble to last forever. Do we know a head count of how many people have worked at Georgia Marble? Oh, an aggregate uh, total, I don't know for sure. Uh, I know that back during the heyday of Colonel Sam's day, in the, especially in the 20s, that was when the things were just booming. He had somewhere between 11 and 1,200 men working mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nowadays between Emrys, Huber, Georgia Marble or Polycore Georgia Marble mm -hmm. and Blue Ridge Marble Nelson and even Whitestone, um, there's probably less than 400 people working in the entire industry. Really? Yeah, because wow. of technology. Yes, you know. because you do more with less. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. 
You know, when you think about Whitestone, did you go out there during writing your book? I've, yes, I've been through, been through Whitestone. You know that two-story house that sits right out there near yep. that? I love that house. Yep. It's, like, the it's like a piece of history. Yep. Yeah, It is a piece of history. It's so beautiful. What's the age of that house? It goes back to the 1880s, I believe. Oh, it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And still looks great. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah, there's very few of the historical homes that have been maintained mm -hmm. and taken care of. And, and we think about the Tate Mansion. It went through a period of time that it looked like it was going to just cave in. Oh, yeah. I mean, it looked rough. And now it's absolutely gorgeous. You couldn't even hardly see it. Best I remember as a kid, you know, back in the early 70s before mm -hmm. Ann Laird bought it. That's when Mama was working right. there. You, you, couldn't even, you couldn't even hardly see it yeah. from all the, uh, the hedges grown up mm -hmm. so much and the vegetation, what have you. Yeah. So. Now, do you still kind of fascinate in all that pink marble? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that just, I showed a house recently, and I walked in, and it was dated, and it needed this, and it needed that, but I focused in on that pink marble fireplace, and I was like, oh, my gosh, and my clients were like, oh, it's overpriced, and it's dated. <laughs> I said, but look at that fireplace, and it had pink marble floors all around the fireplace, and I was yeah. like, do you know how rare that pink marble is? <laughs> oh, exactly, and, yeah. you know, we were, uh, Bay and I were in Savannah a few years ago, um, you know, we were toward uh, St. John the Baptist Cathedral there, and uh, the, they were about to start a tour, and um, the guide was telling us about, you know, the, the different stones that's decorated throughout the, the, um, the cathedral and the sanctuary, and he said, this white marble is from, you know, Georgia, is Georgia marble from up in North Georgia, and the pink, the uh, border around it is Italian marble and we looked at it and said uh, excuse me sir no, no it's that's Edouard marble. pink that's from Georgia yes. marble he kind of looked at me well how can you tell well how do you yeah. know that so well you look at the crystalline structure here yeah yeah and we and he kind of looked at us like you know y'all don't know what you're talking about yeah. I'm like I'll bet you a thousand dollars that yeah. that is Edouard pink yeah 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 so. and now Bill there's not much of that left they're, the quarry is still there the, they um they I think it's probably been about 15 years since they've quarried any pink Why? Well, it's, it costs a lot more to, to cut the marble out of that quarry because they don't have roads cut in, so they have to bring in uh, cranes because the steam derricks aren't working any longer. Mm -hmm. So they have to bring in cranes to extract any blocks. It's worth it. But the, the demand, it's like, you know, demand is not there right now for whatever reason. I but I, again, you know, if they marketed it, maybe, you know, yeah. it would be. I remember Jack and Ann Collins had a pink marble vanity in their bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I was just mesmerized. I'm like, oh my gosh, and it's this huge, gorgeous piece of pink marble. It was just beautiful. It is. And people don't understand that um, when we're talking 150, 180 years of history, this is still going on today. Mm -hmm. it, it is, you know, you can go down to downtown Nelson and you could even see those guys carving the marble. Mm -hmm. They're still doing monuments for around the world. They are. Right here locally. That's amazing. They are. They're, um, you know, the, the majority of the marble uh, that goes out now is going to the v Department of Veterans Affairs, mm -hmm. you know, for headstones. Mm -hmm. And the work that has been on some of those headstones has been amazing. Amazing. Uh, you know, they had, for a couple of years, they had this uh, headstone on display out there. They had, they'd have it on tour for the marble festivals or a, so the, the uh, people on the quarry tour could see mm -hmm. what kind of intricate work was done. And, you know, it's amazing. I mean, just a rose that was, I mean, every petal is just perfect. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Um, actually, Tim Hyde, I think he just finished a really, really amazing piece, and I want to go get some pictures of it because this is the kind of thing that you sit, and it's not like if you're drawing something and you can erase your mistake. <laughs> yeah. if you can't erase no, the marble. So, no. You know, and, and those craftsmen, I wonder how many true marble craftsmen are left in the world. That I don't have, not many, just a handful. Yeah, just, just a, a handful. handful. Yeah, and they're doing all this work for all these amazing, amazing mm -hmm. pieces. So. And like you say, you can't correct if you make a mistake. Mm -mm. There's no do-over. You're in trouble. Do -over. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you're in trouble. Now, the marble, the marble companies that are here, Emrys bought out the piece that's out there. What, do you, what is that plant? What do they do? Calcium producing? products. Calcium division. products. Yeah. Okay, and what do they do with the calcium products? That's where most of the majority, uh, most of the marble that's used goes in to make calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate's a filler material that goes into almost every carpet, industry. Carpet, latex filler. Yep, carpet yep. backing, mm -hmm. paint, caulk, 
uh, drywall, chewing gum. chewing gum, the little white dusty mm -hmm. paper mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the wrapper is, is Georgia marble, Tums, Rolaids, paint, um, in, if in your Do car. Do they make sheetrock out of it? Yep, that's what drywall, yeah, yeah. sheetrock, drywall. Yeah. Your average automobile will have five, 600 pounds of Georgia marble in it. Really? Yeah. Wow. From the carpet back into the paint to the, the uh, any vinyl um, in there. That's so, crazy. Yeah, so we come in contact with it daily and don't mm -hmm. even realize it. Mm -hmm. And again, it's technology because yes. you think about your seats in your car, you don't think about them being made out of marble. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah, talking about, it went, to me, one of the most amazing things was a few years ago, um, we won a silent bid auction for calcium products in, at Emerus and Marble Hill. We were a, a minor for a day, my wife, Bay, and I were. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the interest of the New York mine is that, uh, I think it's at, 11 or 1300 square or feet elevation. Mm -hmm. And we went to the very end, as, as deep as we could go, we went all the way down to 300 feet above sea level. Oh my gosh. And to think that how much blasting, and these, and these roadways are, it's like being on 285. You know, you got these big uke dump trucks that can pass each other. Underneath the ground. Underneath the ground. Oh my gosh. And. Now see, I'm so claustrophobic, I couldn't <laughs> have done that. If I'd have won that trip, I'd have had to, I'd it, have to give it, it to it, you. <laughs> it, it was neat, it was really neat. But I mean, and the, when they blast, they're only blasting about 13 to 15 feet a day. Wow. So we spent from about 7 a.m. 13 to 15 feet a whole a day. day. So we spent from about a little bit before seven o'clock one morning to almost two o'clock in the afternoon underground. Doing nothing but just driving all you know around the all the way from we went it north, so south, weird. east, and west, and straight down. And seven hundred feet down, basically. Mm -hmm. Woo! Seven to eight hundred feet. Straight I'm getting down. cold chills. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. And we you didn't ever been to Ruby Falls? Yes. Okay, I got claustrophobic in Ruby Falls, and I was dying to get out. Oh of there. wow. Yeah, I was like, get me out of here. I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think I well, can Well, and, you know, it's, you, you, you know, you've heard people talk about being pitch dark. I mean, mm -hmm. literally, when they turn the lights off down there, you can, you can touch your nose. You can't see your hand. And, wow. and it's about 65 degrees year-round down there. Yeah, now, that'd be a nice so, place to Oh, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have hot flashes. No, you, <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't have hot flashes. I love it. I love it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take a break because I, I want to share something with you all this weekend. <clears throat> My Georgia Bell sweet Tori came to visit and she got to spend a total of three and a half hours with her nanny. And we did a recipe that uh, Emma Julia would be going, uh, <laughs> Miss Sherry, that ain't how you do them biscuits. But I was trying to teach Tori how to make biscuits and I forgot to tell her as I'm doing mine, because you know, once you know how to do it, you forget how to tell people. I forgot to tell her to dig a well, uh, <laughs> and make a well. So you're gonna see me teaching Tori how to make biscuits. And um, mine were pretty good. Hers were pretty good too, even though we, I think she overworked them a little bit, but I was making them this morning. And I thought, I wish I had somebody who were the camera today who could video, because this morning it was total perfection because I did my well first. And I thought about all the amazing women in this area that every morning in Tate, Georgia, got up and made biscuits for breakfast mm -hmm. for their family and then their husband took the dinner bucket mm -hmm. and put a leftover biscuit and probably some cold eggs in yep. it and headed down into these mines yep. and you know when you're talking 1200 families at least 1200 families in the immediate area and that's what they did they made a big pan of biscuits mm -hmm. and then one or two cold biscuits went with the husband down into the mines mm -hmm. and that's part of that's part of georgia culture you it know that's that. what your husband took to lunch every day that's right that my uh i remember my mother-in-law talking about her grandparents her grandmother made her pa bradley you know a cat head biscuit mm -hmm. with like i say leftover bacon eggs sausage whatever mm -hmm. and uh that he had for breakfast, that would be his lunch. And he went to the mine. There was yes. no microwave That's down right. there. That's right. There was no microwave. He ate that biscuit <laughs> as is, where he is. That's <laughs> so, right. Yeah. And it literally was a lunch pail. Yeah. That they, yeah. they took. Yeah. yeah. Have you got any of those? Have you no. seen those? Gosh, I, when you I, I would, I'd one. love to have we one. We need to throw a word out. If anybody's out there watching us and you might have your daddy's or your granddaddy's lunch pail, that would be so cool to have it that to be. display. That's really yep. cool. Okay, here we go. We're going to show you in my kitchen a major. Uh, fun day. It was a fun day with Tori. I, I'm sad that she's gone back to Alaska, but I'm so glad she got to visit. And here we go as I taught Victoria how to make buttermilk biscuits, but we used sweet milk that day. So here we go.
pay y'all. And I get made fun of for it. Even being in Alaska, you have not lost your southern drawl, thank God. Because you're up there among the people who talk a lot of different languages, huh? Yeah. No, None sure. of them talk southern cooking. Okay. See how this, you got to make a well. I forgot to tell you that, Tori. You no, know, you got to keep your Crisco in the well. well we got to put I'm your Crisco back up. in the well. Okay, get your well going on there. There you go. Nanny was talking, not paying attention. See how you have your perimeter of the well, and this is mixing your Crisco with your white lily flour. It's a crime in the South to use anything but white lily flour. Now watch this. Okay. I don't know if I, I don't think I've already messed it up. Nate. That's okay. We're going to correct it. The second batch. <laughs> We're going to correct it. Okay. There's the milk and you see I'm keeping it in the well. We'll make my batch, then we'll make your batch. How about that? Okay. So you keep it in the well, you keep it in the well and you work it. As Scotty Mayfield says, he says, I can't believe that flower just volunteers to jump in there. You see how it's doing? See, it just volunteers to get in there. And you just keep doing that till the texture and consistency gets right. But Tori, you can't overwork your dough. Or Mike will say, feed the biscuit to the dog. And Bruno will go, I ain't eating that crap. <laughs> so you just work it a little bit. And you add a little bit of flour. So, okay, let's say that I did overwork it. What's it going to look like? It's going to be hard as rock. The first biscuits I made, we threw out in the yard, and Mama's dog walked around them for about a week, and then Mama kicked them off to the curb. So they were really, really bad. You just have to be careful and not overwork your dough. So, Noted. So now we have done, we have mine pretty much ready to go. We're going to sit it aside for a minute and we're going to see if we can okay. rescue yours. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I forgot to tell you, you just keep, you did your, your Crisco's done, the right consistency, but we have to get it back in the middle <clears throat> and we got to create a well. Lord help us. <laughs> Lord help us. Let's see if we can do this. Okay. Need a little bit more milk, Tori, just a little bit. Can you throw a little bit in there? Got it? Okay. Uh, My contribution is pouring the milk at this point. <laughs> yes, but that's okay. You see how it's coming away and it's leaving the wheel? Yes. So it is, it has agreed to volunteer to jump in there. At first it was angry at us. Well, we, we might have salvaged these after I all. I think we have. I think we have, okay. So you see it's, it's come apart away from the well and you just gently Move it and move it and barely work it. And we may have a little bit of an issue. It's a little bit heavy, but that's okay. That's okay. This is not the normal bowl I use, and I may have put too much Crisco in here. Okay, we're going to leave that sitting for a minute. And if you can walk over there and get me that pan, I'm going to do a disclaimer. If these biscuits aren't fit to eat, it's not her fault, it's mine. Because I always use my same old bowl and today I didn't use my same old bowl so it's my fault okay that's why they're your go-to's right they're my go-to you got your stuff in the Check kitchen Crisco action Crisco 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 nothing says loving like something from the oven with Crisco okay see this you just pinch it off and you put it on there and my hands, my granny would be really making fun of my hands. See that? Never, never, never. She'd never do that. Granny's hands never looked like that. Like and what? I've got too much dough on my hands. Mm. She would fuss at me. Mm. But here's, okay. And these are not perfect biscuits, but they are gonna be so close. Okay, see that? Now, do you remember the one thing as a child you heard me say about this? Put them close together so they'll rise. And put your fingerprints in them, like this. You put your fingerprints on them. Don't ask me why, but my granny said to. And I did mind almost everything she said. <laughs> yeah, most of the time. And you just put your little three, three fingerprints on it. So. There you go. 
See how simple it is? But you um, have to. Simple. It looks simple enough yes. until I'm left yes. alone to do it. Yeah, and, and honestly, Tori, the first, probably the first 10 batches I made were not edible because they were too hard and I got too nervous and I, I worked it too much and, you know, I did whatever. But, and I'll tell you the best biscuits I ever made, um, I made what they call South Georgia flat biscuits mm -hmm. and you really make them flat and you cook them crispy and, oh my God, they're so good. But I don't make those anymore. So, but there you go. How simple Boom. is that? We're gonna do that. Now we're gonna add yours around the corner. <laughs> and I'm gonna see if we'll you see. can do what I just did. And, and then you, you just don't put think it needs to be mixed anymore? You think uh -uh. it's okay? Mm -mm. I All think right. it's good. Just be careful when you pinch it off. I don't know, Nanny. <laughs> I feel like it's a very small biscuit. Yeah, that's okay. Ew. If it's a small biscuit, you can eat three instead of two. Yeah. So see, there you I go. I feel like it's just getting stuck to me. It does. That's why you have to keep flour on your hand. Now, and I'm going to show you what you're doing is you're overworking it. Look, you pinch it off and you do this. So I want to make a rock hard one you know, just so yes, we can see. Yes, that will be rock hard. <laughs> yes. See? <laughs> see, how, see what I'm doing? I'm you pinch it off and then look. This is all you do. Jiggle, one, jiggle, jiggle. One roll. Get look. it put together. Here. There you go. Yeah. But it... Come on, let's get your hands clean. <laughs> let's clean. That's where we're in trouble. That's just terrible. <laughs> no, you're not. You're going to well. learn. Honestly, I told you my granny fired me at biscuit making, and I had to go to her sister's to learn to make biscuits. Well, apparently it's jumped a couple generations because <laughs> well, uh, I'm about ready to be terminated when I look okay, at these. Okay, okay. Mm. Look at this. Okay. Okay. Even though it looks like a mess, I have flour on my hands, so it's easy to do. Awesome. You didn't have enough flour. You've got... Too much dough. Get the dough off your hands. Rub your dough in here. Oops. Just rub it like that. And now dip your hands in the flour, just pure flour. And once you coat your hands with flour, you're in better shape. There you go. Okay. There you go. There you go. And I'm actually, oh, let's see. Uh, let me see what we can do with that one. I'm going to, uh, he's going to fall apart. I can tell he's going to fall apart. We'll give him an edge. Okay. Okay. We're going to stop water? right there. We're going to stop right there. We have three that came out of your batch right there. <laughs> One, two, three, four. They're obvious. Well, it's okay. <laughs> this is your first time making biscuits. And honestly, because I didn't use my normal bowl, mine probably won't be as good as normal. Yeah. But it'll be okay. So, okay, we're going to throw them in the oven at 455 degrees. And at the same time, we're cooking pork mm. chops and bacon. And these should be ready in just a few minutes. You ever had hand fried pork chops? Yes. Yeah. This is like south in your mouth. Yum. And then this is the basis for the gravy. we got to have this good grease to make our gravy. So that'd be so cool. And we're gonna, now we're going to cover that and let them sit there while the biscuits cook. Does that make sense? Okay, so come back and join us in about 10 minutes when the biscuits come out of the oven. Yay, we're back. Okay, what a biscuit lesson. And let me tell you, I blew it because I did not teach my grandchild that you make a well first to do your biscuits. And, and I was using a bowl I, wasn't, I didn't like. And this morning, my biscuits were much better than Sunday's. But anyway, it was so much fun to have her here. And, um, you know, she's been in Alaska now for a total of, I think, seven years. And you know who took her there and made her fall in love with it, don't you? Mm -hmm. Dummy here, <laughs> dummy here. Said, Tori, we gotta go to Alaska and you just gotta fall in love with Alaska. And she did and she moved there. And she says, Nanny, I'll probably never live anywhere else. So I've accepted that. But she, she comes back to Georgia to visit. You know what the highlight of her trip was this time? Making biscuits. Six Flags. Six, oh. <laughs> Six Flags. <laughs> they went to Six Flags, so they had a blast. But okay, I wanna encourage y'all, pick up a copy of The Road to Georgia Marble. And I can tell you, as a kid who grew up around this company and knowing what they meant to the community and the payroll and the, you know, we talked about the Tate Clinic. The Tate Clinic wouldn't have existed. That's right. Had it not been for the company. That's right. And, and it's like the home that my mother was fortunate enough to live in. And, and I've always wanted to rebuild that house. It just, 
It had the warmest, sweetest feeling in it. And, and I think it just, you know, I don't even know, do you know why that house was initially built? Was it just for the teachers? It was a teacher's dorm. When it was originally built, it was because, like you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. Colonel Sam, when uh, he would go out and, and recruit the best teachers he could find for Tate, the training school, mm -hmm. and Marble Hill and Nelson School. So mm -hmm. he had all four of those schools that he was responsible for. So he would go out and recruit and hire the best teachers he could that money could buy. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason Tate has always had uh, was, was one of the better schools anywhere mm -hmm. around That's because amazing. it was, again, it goes back to government versus the private sector. Right. right. He was funding it out of, he was paying the wages yeah. and, and he was re re uh, recruiting the best he could money could buy. And you know, we think about that. I, your next book should be the history of the people who moved in here because of the school or Georgia Marble or whatever and are now fifth generation, sixth generation here and have made such an impact on our communities. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about those teachers who were brought in from anywhere and everywhere, they met and married somebody here true. and became part of the community and then their legacy lives on. Very true. So there's no telling if we could get how, how could we ever find out who were the teachers? Ugh. Everybody's gone, Bill. I know. We're all dying I off, y'all. I don't know if y'all have noticed, but we're getting old. <laughs> what are we going to do about it? Can't do a thing about it. Can't do a thing about it. We're just going to get old. But this history, it is so important. And, and when we think about the Fitzsimmons family, who, what's this lady's name? Um, is there a lady named Julie Fitzsimmons? I was thinking the other day, I was looking at all the old names and I thought about the Marble Company and I thought, who who are their heirs? Who's still left in the community? Well, there, the Fitzsimmons, there's still some descendants left um, that have, they've moved away and they've come back, but, um, you know, of course, they, they did not get to share in the uh, prosperity of, mm -hmm. of the Tate family. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of Tates left in this area, not many. Most mm -hmm. of them live in the metro Atlanta area and, and mm -hmm. what have you, but. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and Tate Mountain Estates is a whole other day. Oh yeah. So next yeah. time you come, that's yeah. what we're going to talk yeah, about. Yeah, the Conahaney Lodge, which was Colonel Sam's as well. Yes, so. yes, and there's, there's so much that people don't realize if you've just moved into the area and you're riding these back roads and we want to encourage you, will you map me out a trip for people to make? Sure. Let's do a GPS and next time Bill comes on, we'll talk about Tate Mountain Estates, which is way away from mm -hmm. Tate, Georgia. Mm -hmm. But it is actually one of the most beautiful places in North Georgia and you have to wait till somebody dies to get you a house in there. That's about right. Because nobody ever sells a house and they just transfer over That's and it. over. It's crazy, but it is so beautiful. That's right. Well, you, you know Mary, uh, Mary Jane Reed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. used to have the hair hutch. Right. Um, she sent me a picture of, and I wish I would have known they were, you know, they, they, she acquired a couple of chairs, original chairs from the Conahaney Lodge. Oh my gosh. That, uh, no, I think it was her sister, Patricia. Patricia. Yeah. And she sold them. You know, and I was like, "Oh my gosh! Oh I wish I, wish I would have known that." Yes. But, you know, oh I, they they sent me a picture of it. So wow, wow, that was, well, that was neat to see. Yeah, that is next time. Next time we're going to talk about not just the Tay area, but when you think about the expansion that Sam Tate mm -hmm. and and what he did and what he accomplished for the community that is still paying off today mm -hmm. because those well-educated kids. Many of them are now the teachers in the community today. Many of them are the retired teachers right. in the community. Many of them are those people who made a difference, a very positive impact mm -hmm. on Jasper Tate, Nelson, Talking Rock. Well, essentially, he was uh, also instrumental in, in what is now Big Canoe. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, if yeah. you, there's still, I don't know if you can get it at in publication, <clears throat> but Wolf Scratch Village mm -hmm. is a great mm -hmm. book yeah. on Colonel Sam in that era. Yeah, yeah. There. So he didn't just stay in Tate, y'all. He's no. going to spread out a little bit. We'll talk about that next time. Again, the book is The Road to Georgia Marble, and I suggest you pick up a copy of it. It is um, found in Jasper Drugstore, Bell's Pharmacy down in Tate, and uh, I'm going to see if we can get some down in Ball Ground, and hopefully we'll set you up a book signing in uh, Ball Ground. And we need to do it on Friday when they have that really good brisket pizza. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll do that. Thanks for being with us today, and Bill, thank you so much. And give your sweet bae a hug and tell her, we need to see smoke on the mountain sometimes. <laughs> Yay!
Yay. We'll see you again soon, y'all. Stay tuned to ETC and uh, local sports, local things happening, and uh, check out everything that's happening in your community, but do it on the back roads. Keep yourself off 515. Just give it to the tourists for the next few weeks and get out on the back roads and just have a blast. Enjoy this beautiful, beautiful day. Please say a prayer for everybody who's hurting out there. So many people are battling with COVID and battling so many things that you just, you know, you don't have a clue what's going on with your neighbor. So be kind to your neighbor. Make some bread pudding and tote it to your neighbor. I did that last night and I got tickled. I said, my mama is sitting in heaven going, uh-huh. You're making bread pudding now and you wouldn't eat mine. <laughs> but I make bread pudding all the time now. So do something for somebody else. It'll pay off 10,000 fold. I'll see you again soon, guys. Bye.